Okay, let's get started here. Okay, um, so we're today we're talking about the best new appliance brands and some more products to consider avoiding. Uh, it's a really great presentation we have planned for you today. Uh, with us, uh, so I'm I'm Pat Polingo, uh, marketing at Yale Appliance here. With us today is our CEO Steve Scheinkoff and Francesco Froyo, our uh, the general manager of all our sh showroom locations. Um, just some housekeeping items before we get started here. We are going to be recording this and we'll share the recording uh, after the event. So just keep that in mind as you um, consider taking notes, you're gonna get the presentation and the recording. Uh, do use the Q&A feature to send in any questions that come up along the way. We have a lot of great questions from registration that we can dive into, but use the, uh, the Zoom Q&A feature to send in anything that pops up as we get started here. And uh, just remember that all of our previous webinars are available on our YouTube channel. So there's lots of great topics. Um, if you're in the market, uh, considering a kitchen renovation, there's lots of products, um, webinars about how to get started, uh, brands to consider, and many more um, for you to check out there. And with all of that out of the way, I'll turn it over to Steve Scheinkoff, our CEO, for today's presentation. Thank you, Pat. Pat, you're going to be listening. You're a new homeowner, right? Just just sign your papers. Huh? That's right. Yeah. yeah yep. These webinars now mean something, don't they? <laughs> a huh? little more, yeah, a little more skin <laughs> in the game now. Yes, for sure. Yes. Well, congratulations. Um, it's best new appliance brands and five more appliances to avoid. That brings us to 22 total items. Um, that uh, we've covered that you should avoid. And, and I'll tell you the, uh, the, the inspiration behind all this with the best new brands and all is, um, <laughs> I was at a funeral and, and, and there was a function afterwards and this woman comes up to me, didn't even introduce herself. We're sitting down for, uh, for lunch and she says, does it take a year for a Sub-Zero meal, a Thermidor or a Bosch dishwasher? And the short answer is probably. And everyone talks about the supply chain. It's just, it's a lot of stuff. It's um, you know, container shortages, port problems. We lost 350,000 truckers, but there's no warehouse space. There's component issues. And superimposed on that, if we look at the pandemic and the history is, is unbelievable demand. And, and I think all these companies, and, and, and I'm not throwing shade at any of them, they've done a great job of manufacturing things. It's just that the overwhelming demand and the faltering supply is just too much for anything. So in 2019, we could ship you a zero sub zero within a week. Now it's six months to a year or more. And to give you an idea, I mean, um, in terms of service calls, um, last year we did about 43,000 service calls. The last quarter we did 50, over 15,000 service tickets. Uh, where that's trending like 60,000. It's like a a 25% increase on top of the 10 or 15% increase uh, the previous two years. So that's what we're talking about. But really the way I want you to think is, is, is first of all, if you got a project and this was a question that was asked um, and it's a year out and you want you know, one of the popular brands and they are popular for a reason, um, certainly cons uh, consider ordering them before you need them. You know, a year would, would, would be safe except for some uh, exceptions that we're talking about. But the other thing, if you can't wait, and even if you want to avail yourself of everything, is, is ask yourself, like, let's look at a Bosch dishwasher. What is the reason why you're buying it? Is, is it because it's quiet? Because that's how Bosch made its name. So I, I want to show you something, just, just, just to start, right? We look at dishwashers, right? Bottom numbers is the percentage of service in the first year. Bottom left is 1.7%. It's the lowest we've ever measured for any product. Average is about 12.5% service in the first year. The other two are, uh, are underneath that by a couple percentage points. They all have, they're all below 44 decibel, which is all you need. You don't need to buy a 39 decibel. If it has, it's great, but human ear can't detect under 44. So they're all quiet. Uh, you know, one of them has steam to loosen up, um, uh, you know, heavily soiled dishes. The other one's got a dedicated bottle wash. One's got uh, pulls the air out of the system so you, where you dry plastics better. The other one's got hybrid dry. The, the one on the right is pops the, pops the door open to release steam to dry. Now, which one would you buy if you didn't know this? You, know, you got LG, you got Profile. By the way, that 42 decibel, they have got a grinder in there as well. So something to think about, right? Let's look at two kind of new dishwashers. One's corner intense. You know, it's not on a 
this brand's not on a fixed axis anymore. So it washes the, um, the corners better than most. The other one, it's got a quick and tense cycle, which is 58 minutes wash and dry, right? Which one are you going to buy here, right? One's 39. I know I need to say it, but it comes with it, right? The other one's 42. Both get dry. I know you're thinking about ion generators. There's a line, there's a, a brand of products that has ion generators. And what, what that does is it pulses negative ions. Now, you wouldn't know it, neither would I, that, uh, that uh, odors have positive ions. So by pulsing negative, it, 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 re it reduces odors. And it actually works too. But one's got 10.3, one's 8.9. So st statistically very similar. Which one would you buy here? Okay. Let's look at double ovens, right? You got one's got two ovens, one's got an oven and a, and a baking floor. One's six burners. You know, you have colors here, stainless and black stainless. The black stainless you shouldn't be buying. We'll talk about that later. One's Wi-Fi enabled with a 19,000 BTU griddle. It's two 9,500 BTUs. Which one are you going to buy? Cafe you can get or the kitchen and you can't. Lastly, last analogy here is, is pro ranges. This is a very interesting one, right? Uh, the one on the left is more powerful. You get uh, 23,000 BTU burns, multiple, multiple 23,000 BTU burners, depending on the configuration versus 122. They both have induction capability if you want that. One's got a gas chromium griddle, so it's really easy to clean versus, you know, less powerful electric. They both have 100 BTU thermo. One's consistent on the left. One is, you know, intermittent. The one on the right, they both have steam oven capability if you want that. Uh, and the one on the left has got real sous vide. Which one would you buy? The signature that you can buy. The Thermidor, and I love Thermidor, by the way. I've had it in, in, in my previous apartment, loved it. But which one are you going to buy? The, the one on the left that you can get within three months and the one on the right you have to wait six months or a year for. Yeah. So this is a, you know, we got a table of contents. It's like all over the place, but really it's, it's uh, basic kitchen design because I think you should know so. Um, and then we're going to get into things you shouldn't buy and then the products you should consider in, in, in their categories. And then I'm going to finish up with some key takeaways for you. Five new appliances to avoid. Um, and the first one I'm kind of getting a little flack for, it's the Samsung Bespoke. You know, it's kind of the antidote to stainless steel as it were. And it's a kind of two categories. One's a, you know, the range of the over the range dishwasher available in stainless, which is the most popular. Uh, Tuscan and black steel that I'll get to in Navy. Na I like the Navy finish. It's not exactly the most popular finish, but let's go over, let's go over the first one. This is a black steel, which you shouldn't buy. We did a scratch test on it like six, seven years ago. And um, you can scratch it. And once you scratch, it's non-repairable. You're going to see that shiny stainless exterior, and there's no way to repair it. It's cosmetic, so it's not warrantyable. Um, you can consider black, but black stainless you should stay away from. On the other side, you get Tuscan, brown. Every manufacturer's taken a, a stab at Tuscan. I remember years ago, January had oil rub bronze. Mila had truffle brown. My grandfather sold it as toast. Dad sold it as cappuccino. Um, the problem with Metallic brown doesn't match cabinet brown. So that's the problem. And it, it doesn't match as well with, um, with the white and gray that's become popular now. Um, so brown's not really something you should consider. Now, that doesn't mean you shouldn't. Some people have an eye for stuff um, or if you've got brown trims or something, um, you may want to consider it, but not a finish that I would naturally go to, which leaves you navy. Now, this is the other part. This is the Samsung refrigeration which has got 11 different glass finishes with, with the same colors plus green for whatever reason, green. So you can make all these, this is all pat made. Um, these combinations, get on samsung.com and make yourself a bespoke refrigerator. Um, so you have 17 different possibilities and colors and infinite choices. But that's the problem, right? It's a refrigerator. And again, you're installing panels on and it's not naturally coming in that color unless you order as the base stainless. Um, I'm sorry, is the base metallic. But here's the problem, okay? So if you were to come to me and say, look, I, I, I have no idea what I'm doing uh, starting a kitchen, I'd say two things, focal point, and then sink, cooktop, dishwasher in that order, because that is where you're going to be the most. Your sink is where you are at the most, and followed by the cooktop. And it's, it's critical to centralize that cooktop because uh, and put it in the main place because you're, you're stirring. Is something very active and you know the dishwasher is number three but it goes it goes with the sink the refrigerator is never the focal point because you don't need to be in your fridge nothing nothing critically bad is going to happen if you forget 
to get something out of the fridge. Same thing with the wall. I mean, you know, you're not checking the, the, the turkey every 20 minutes. I mean, every, every two minutes, like you're stirring the pot. So if we're centralizing that on all the kitchen design, you're going to see the stove becomes the focal point, right? So if you were to put the red on the refrigerator, that's not the central part of your kitchen. So what, what Samsung should have done is, I guess the color of today is red, but the what Samsung should have done is made their, their stoves red. And, and the reason why they didn't do it, obviously, is, you know, they have to, they, they don't have to make, you know, 11 or 17 different color ranges, a lot easier to stock a, a base finish and, and put a panel on it. That's not the way it, that's not the way you should do it. If you're going to put color, think stove first. If you want to put it through your kitchen, you can do that too. But centralizing those three items and then putting, um, putting the color on the central part makes the most sense for kitchen design, which is why the bespoke is not going to work. You know, I, I, when I originally said this, I said, let's show a picture of a kitchen in Navy. And now you get an idea of, of, of some other kitchen design. I mean, they, they, the focal points, the window, it always seems to be uh, for better or worse. But take a look at this, right? See how the stove is way away from the, the sink? Let's say you burn something. That's a Blue Star range, a 25,000 B2 burner, pro-bake oven, very powerful, very conceivable. Where are you going to go to instinctively? And that would be your, your sink. Um, so the way to change this would be to, to rotate that up, would be to rotate the island. Again, I don't have the renderings or anything like that, but rotate the island, put the sink in the middle there. You can leave a bar sink on the side, put your dishwasher on the island and do it like this. Now, if you burn something up here, see how easy it is? Good kitchen design, you go back and forth. One step, very easy, much safer than shimmering around um, a rectangular corner. Okay. But originally I just kind of wanted to show you blue. Anyway, single evaporator refrigerators work. Your mom had them, your grandmother had them. You don't need to buy them. Um, the two evaporators work better. The way it is, you get a separate, uh, separate air for refrigerator and freezer so they don't mix. So you don't get as much defrosting. Um, so the odors and taste don't mix. So your freezer will taste better. Um, again, single evaporators work, but it's the same price to get a twin evaporator, like the profile here versus the single evaporator KitchenAid on the right. Um, basic work, but the, uh, the, the twin evaporator is a, a better, uh, better design. It's a more modern current design. Anything unique have to, you have to buy. You're looking at something unique. Um, my architect wanted this for one of his clients. It was a two-year wait. The reason is, is because Thermo is the only one who makes a speed oven over a single oven. And that's a problem when they don't make it like they aren't. Um, you'll have to wait. The easy solution is to just basically just get a single oven and a speed oven. That way, if the speed oven doesn't come in, there's a separate cabinet hole and you can work with, the, um, with just the single oven. You know, when you do something like this, you're cutting one hole, your electrical, you know, if it's a steam oven, your plumbing goes a certain way. If, uh, if you get the single oven, it's, it's two separate holes, electrical is fed in differently. Um, uh, I think that basically anything, any spec that one manufacturer has, you know, it's a popular manufacturer, I, I'd consider with just going with something um, more basic, I wouldn't say basic, but something a little less unique, right? Overrange range microwave was my favorite appliance 30 years ago and was introduced 32 years ago in 1990, but it hasn't changed. It's 350 CFM. Um, but the, the range underneath sure has. Uh, you now you have two power burners where it was just professional, right? Um, now you get a 19 to 17,000 that particular range plus a griddle in the middle. And all of them stick out between 22 and 24 inches versus just 15 or 16. So you're not going to vent properly. If you cook on the most powerful front burners, which everyone does, uh, the microwave's not going to vent. Uh, and here's the thing about microwaves, you put them anywhere, put a hood over that, microwave will go countertop, under cabinet, through a cabinet, you can do the draw microwaves, which have become popular under countertop. So um, I don't think you need to do that, although inexpensive to do, totally understand. Um, and if you're in a, you know, I know a lot of you are, are, are fixed into um, apartments, I mean, they have them, cook on the back burners if you can, and, and open a window um, to compensate. Next one, again, windows have become, we're more interested in form than function. Uh, ceiling blowers, uh, even in the specs, say four to seven feet over the cooking surface. That's, I've seen these over cathedral ceilings that won't work. Now, way back when I used to live in Cambridge, they put a high, high CFM path fan over it. And um, 
the ceiling around it was grimy. Now you got to remember, everyone's locked into the CFM, how many cubes of air go through the exhaust, how it exhausts. But remember, good venting is, is uh, CFM, short duct runs and capture, meaning if we go back to that, we smoked out our house again, or, you know, we burned something, you know, smoke is, is not immediately evacuated, it's chambered. And, and what I see with these is there's no chambering with these, uh, uh, these. so I, I'd be careful, especially if you cook. So those are your five. Now let's get into some slightly more optimistic stuff, meaning um, proxy should be considering um, even when the popular stuff comes back. Uh, SKS is the uh, division of LG. What I like about LG is 4% repair in the first year, which is just amazing. Um, you know, the pro ranges are good. For, for those of you like column style refrigeration, this is the largest all stainless steel. Uh, and they're one of the two manufacturers that actually makes a dishwasher that you put a panel on right now. So all sorts of good stuff. They get a good uh, package of $10,000, which is that regular range I showed over, over the, uh, with the over the range microwave you should be buying. They've got good French door refrigeration as well. This is a good, this is a LG again. Everyone knows them for their laundry, but they're still just 6.3 cubic feet. Uh, only, KitchenAid is uh, Jenny is bigger at 6.5 cubic feet. And this one has the probate convection and gas blown in from the rear to keep them more even heat. Um, dishwashers, as I mentioned, have steam in the mid, have steam to loosen up um, tough stains. The refrigerator is really interesting because it's, 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 it's to evaporator and it works on sensors. And um, you've got the instant view window, which you can tap twice to um, illuminate so you can see what's in it. Or in my case, tap it twice and not see what's in it. And in in, uh, LG makes the uh, Kraft Ice Cube. Kraft Ice is those cylindrical, slow dissolving balls, if you like um, scotch or fine liquor. And uh, they don't dissolve, and they're the only ones that make it. They make like three every 24 hour period, but all sorts of good stuff throughout uh, this line. They've got SKS, LG Studio, which is really a nice, more style product in the regular LG line as well. Becca, we talked about as far as dishwasher, we want our on, on front access. They, um, their new range is a twin convection. Also, it packages under $6,000 with good features. And again, they've got all this unique features. You're like, does this stuff even work? But it does. You know, their, their uh, refrigerators, you know, they have the Everfresh Plus, the crisper bend that keeps air out. But they, they do blue lighting. We used to be in the lighting business. And um, it uh, blue lighting renders the same as sunlight. Sunlight is actually unflattering blue light. So when you put blue light in a refrigerator, it tricks the, the, the fruits and vegetables into extended photosynthesis. And, you know, it, it sounds kind of fantastical, but we, we tested it in a month with fruits and vegetables. And um, it was a second only to Sub-Zero's twin compressor model that was like $8,000 more. So really interesting, but kind of cool stuff that works. And they have that ion generator we talked about in the beginning. Now, you saw Samsung bespoke, but the antidote of stainless steel may be white, black, and what CAFE does is, is they have white, black, stainless, and then you can you can get different accessories like uh, uh, this is brass, which is really popular in New England. You know, copper or stainless steel get something a little bit unique. I even like the uh, black and copper. Look at the lighting, you know, the copper lighting. They they mix that in really nicely. Uh, not sure about the blue cabinets, but it's nice looking appliances. Um, Fisher Bakel, red. There's your red range. Um, double drawer dishwasher. They have very unique wall ovens and cooktops, especially in induction. They have pro ranges. You can get the half induction, half gas, or eight burner gas in a 48 inch. Kind of different. And, and then you have True. Um, Sub Zero is the number one. It's also American owned and, and uh, uh, family owned and American manufactured, as is True. If you go to Wegmans and Whole Foods, you take your food out of a True freezer. Now, these guys do something a little different with color. Can't panelize a true, which is odd, but they have 11 different finishes and six different hinge finishes. So you can get something different. They actually make green look good. Green's not a real popular color typically, uh, but they have it in, you know, you get the blue, once again, green, uh, stainless steel. Like they even have, this is not yellow, this is saffron. Um, but go to True's website. It's kind of fun playing with the different colors and the different hinges. So if we were to just say for premium refrigerators, in, in, if you can't get a Sub-Zero, and, and, I, and I, again, once again, I'm a, I'm a big Sub-Zero fan. Um, anything that's American owned and family owned is, is something I, I, we, we tend to go to in a, in a business. But um, 
SKS has got the uh, the integrated uh, columns and in all different sizes. They're the largest. Fisher Pickle has got some that are inexpensive. And then you get the uh, your true commercial. That's the 36 inch bottom out that sub zero made fans. In counter depth, uh, you have the Insta the uh, the InstaView LG and three and four door and door combinations. Uh, I mentioned uh, Cafe. Um, Cafe, in terms of refrigeration, it's got the cured coffee system and hot water system in it, and it's got all those different finishes. If you want to do that, just get a good basic twin evaporator. They have it in their profile line. And again, Beko has got the three and four door that you should consider um, as well. In terms of pro ranges, one on the right, uh, that Fisher Pickell is what I talked about induction gas. Now, why would anyone do that? Well, uh, gas, for whatever reason, uh, for a, no, a number of reasons, is being banned in multi unit um, housing. Uh, and really, what gas needs, because it, it pours so many, um, uh, so much gas, is like uh, carbon oxide, nitrous oxide, and everything else, you need to vent it properly, and it's not a problem. But um, you go with induction. Induction's uh, faster with a better simmer and more easily controlled than gas. But in certain areas that are actually banning the gas ranges, they're having electrical problems. So at least you can cook on four of the burners. You can light, you can light gas with match, but you've got to wait for induction. So that's kind of an interesting compromise. Uh, and again, you know, Thermidor, SKS have induction modules on their gas ranges as well. For stoves, you have cafe uh, in those different finishes. At LG with a large size, and if you're looking for something inexpensive, a good power and twin convection, then you look at Beko. Um, for dishwashers, uh, Miele and Bosch have been out. Um, we're ordering Bosch dishwashers that won't be available for a year, and we couldn't order. We haven't ordered Miele dishwashers to suspended orders uh, since last November. So good alternatives are going to be the profile that has the grinder and 42 dBs and uh, specific bottle washes. Beko's got that new corner and tents. They've got the bottle washes too. They even have a, a spray for the filter. And LG again uh, with, uh, with, with steam. Take a look at the front of the door. Those are the steam generators, those four little dots. Again, 90% of the panel dishwashers that we sell uh, were Beko and, well, I'm sorry, Beko were Bosch and Miele. And the reason is, is because they fit within a 24 inch frame. So they look like a cabinet. When you, when you buy an American brand like KitchenAid or GE, what happens, it sticks out. So it looks like a dishwasher that someone stuck a panel on. But both these dishwashers have good features. Um, you can put a panel on and, and it looks seamless, just like the uh, Bosch and the Miele do. So good alternatives. The last thing I wanna talk about service is, uh, uh, we talk about the supply chain and a lot of existing manufacturers have new parts components. And I, I recently mentioned uh, how many service tickets we're booking. Uh, service is something you've got to be very careful about, especially now when you've got new parts vendors that may or may not be working like the old ones do in, 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 um, in boxes, in, in existing products. Um, it's something to be really concerned about, especially now. Um, you know, we've hired 15 new guys and, and, and we have 10 more in training. So we're, we're going to get behind this, but this is something I know a lot of you from out of state is something you really got to be concerned with now. So... Here are your key takeaways that oddly have enough have very little to do with what I talk about. Centralize your sink, stove, and dishwasher. Then properly, it's a problem, really, um, because you've got powerful burners, and, and uh, we're going to talk about that next seminar yeah, more in depth. Don't buy one-of-a-kind items. Um, just don't. There's always a, another way to do what it is you're doing in a one-of-a-kind. Plan a year for the popular brands, and you shouldn't have a problem with some exceptions. But really look at why you want what you want. If it's quiet dishwasher, if it's a pro range with a certain B2 output, you know, certainly consider, consider other, other brands. I think there's a lot of better brands out there that, that might get some attention now that you can't get some of the other ones. So that's it for me. Um, uh, our next one is gonna be um, how to plan your kitchen ventilation and lighting. And I know it went on in the lighting business, but see, people seem to have a um, People seem to have like uh, a lot of questions because no one's really trained to do lighting. Like um, in, in, in vending and lighting really tie in more than you think they would. Like in this picture right here, you've got the, um, the island, which is oddly enough, the answer to the question is always two or three pendants. But it's, it's, it's like that because they were smart to put the vent against the wall, which is what we recommend here. And then I'm going to give you some free uh, 
going to give you some tax free weekend strategy. A lot of people save the tax. They spend, they save the 6.25 only to spend 15% in effort. And um, we want to, we want to show you how to circumvent that. So that'll be August 3rd. That's only in, I think that's what, two weeks. So um, August 3rd for our next one. So you can take advantage of tax free weekend properly. With that I'll give it back to you, Pat and uh, Fran. And uh, thank you for your uh, time and attention. Perfect. Thank you, Steve. And yes, we will be sending out the registration for that next webinar topic when we share this recording. Um, and let's uh, let's get into the Q and A. Then um, use the Q and A feature in Zoom to send over any questions that have come up. Um, we have some some questions that were submitted during registration to dive into. Um, let's stick with kind of the kitchen um, induction. Uh, is always a popular topic, Steve. Um, the question is, what are the best mid-range induction ranges? And considering knobs versus touch controls, what's what goes into making that decision? You, you put yourself on mute. I guess I'm taking this one off, huh, Fran. Uh, <laughs> well, you, you know, it, that's a great question. Um, let's talk about the ones that are not mid-range. Typically, the ones in our mid-range are wolf, in Mueller. And Mueller gives you steam. Wolf will give you the uh, gourmet function, <coughs> a little different burner configuration. So that leaves you with uh, Bosch, LG. I think Samsung has got a few. Um, G Profile, G Cafe. Um, certainly there are rebate programs that you take advantage of. And, 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 and I'm always a big fan of the touch controls. I think they're more precise. And everyone always says, well, touch controls can go. And I always say, what's the last time your microwave went? So I, I think they're, they're, they're more or less standard in, in terms of that. But I think you better control with a, um, and again, the way the service guys, and they talk their own languages. When you turn a knob, there's a thing that turns the knob, which turns something else, which turns something else. Whereas, you know, a, a digital control, as long as it's good from the outset, is going to remain probably good for, for quite some time. So... I think you get less service overall with the uh, uh, touches along with, with greater uh, flexibility of control. Absolutely. And I would just add too, as far as brands, you know, we talked about LG and SKS and LG Studio, kind of their mid-level brand there too, kind of a step up from the baseline LG, makes some really great products as well. And definitely something to consider, you know, a little bit of a smaller line, which is nice, but they have one induction range and it's really kind of gives you some a, a few nicer step up features kind of from the base LG if that's something too that you're looking for. So LG Studio is another great line to consider. Let's stick with induction there. Um, we always, we're always asked induction versus gas cooking. Um, what are the differences there? What are the benefits uh, for each maybe? Uh, I'll just add real quick here. One of the first things, so, you know, when I first started with the company about seven years ago, you know, we still, we all write blogs. And one of my first blogs was professional gas range versus induction. And I'll tell you, I was personally amazed. I was like, wow. Like I, I remember testing five in, in pro ranges versus five induction uh, cooktops or ranges and induction really blew gas away every single time. So as far as speed and control, induction is really second to none safety as well. I mean, there's really a lot of great things to, to talk about with induction. You know, gas is one of those things. Historically, people have always used gas. They like gas. There's something to see in the flame. But if you really compare the, the pros and cons and safety and performance, you really, it's really tough to beat induction when it comes again to, to not only the quickness of, of speed and, and the temperature, but also the control and being able to go from, you know, a boil to a simmer instantly too so really a lot of great things to consider with induction yeah i would say that the only thing that i would say about gas is first of all uh, uses less amps and i know there's a lot of towers in boston we only get like 50 amps you know in your unit some of the older ones so you're not going to get induction and, and gas uses less gas um, is 6.4 uh, percent service in the first year induction is 9.9 and the problem that you're going to have in a lot of areas is is it's way easier to fix a gas than it is induction. So you just gotta make sure that you can get it fixed. I mean, 9.9 is still pretty, is, is, is about average, but 6.4 is easy, it puts, you see the burner. Um, so it's, it's reliability and the fact that, you know, 
I think it's really interesting. I think California is really interesting because they've got all these rolling blackouts and they want to go induction. And induction is safer because your kid can't turn it on because it's got to sense metal, you know, it, it doesn't get as hot and all the rest of it. But, um, you know, using all those amps, uh, I don't know how, if they get blackouts now and millions of induction ranges going online instead of gas, you know, all, all that environmental stuff doesn't work when you got to have to build power plants for all the, all the induction. Yeah, no question. Uh, so just a reminder to send in any questions into the Q&A feature here, then we'll get we'll make sure to get to them. Um, let's pivot to laundry here. We had a question about top load washers. Um, top load washer, what's, a, what's our preference for between an agitator uh, style and an impe impeller style? Maybe explain those and what the differences are. Well, <laughs> you know, it's really funny. Um, front loaders became popular, I, I want to say, you know, late 1990s. And you have all these legacy um, uh, uh, top load manufacturers um, that, that, that wanted that energy efficient, energy star thing. And what they did is they took the agitator, quite honestly, and and that, uh, and then they made the barrel bigger, but the, unfortunately the, the agitator was what stirred the actual clothes to clean them. So the original ones really didn't work. Um, and we tested some of the ones 10 years ago and they still didn't work. I mean, the lawsuits, the Calypso, the Oasis, whatever they call them. Now what you're seeing is you're seeing uh, the, you know, uh, profile just came out with one. You know, it's 4.8 cubic foot, which is roughly the size of a, of a front load, but it's got a skinny, skinnier agitator in it. And, and, and I just don't see how top loads will work without them, to be quite honest with you. You know, the, the, the front loads are all gravity fed and they've been around forever. But I, I honestly think it's kind of like, you know, it, it's kind of like the, the way this industry works is like when the wine craze happened, what, what, the, what, the, what the refrigerator companies did is they took the shelves out and put wine racks in but wine needs to be stored different than refrigerated. It's the same thing here. It's like, well, we got to be energy efficient. Let's take the agitator. Now we get capacity, doesn't use as much water, but it just doesn't work. It doesn't clean. Um, and it still doesn't clean. But I think the new ones, I want to say uh, Maytag has it, uh, you know, Profile has it. And uh, what's the other one? Fisher Paykel and what's the other one? Uh, LG, right? They all have those thin yes. agitators, right? Yep. Yeah. Yeah, and then exactly what you said. I mean, really, all about cleanability and you know even when you look at the ones with with the um without the agitator you know it's it's not like you can just dump your clothes in there you still need to load them around as if there were an agitator there and the big thing is it, it's so hard for those clothes to turn and really the soap needs a little bit of friction and movement to really kind of turn and, and be able to clean the clothes and without that you know they're not turning they're not getting clean there's just the detergent is not getting through the wash like it would in a front load machine or a top load with an agitator that's really able to move the clothes around thanks guys yeah let's when let's um pivot towards refrigeration here we have a couple of questions about refrigeration um for someone who's interested in a french door style refrigerator uh with no smart technology right? We hear a lot about smart technology and the capabilities there. Um, what are options for French doors without smart tech? And maybe we, we can talk about, are there benefits to the smart technology that people should consider? Well, um, I, I don't think really smart technology is that big a deal in a fridge. Uh, and I don't think it's got much promise either. Um, what, a, what a smart refrigerator will do, um, Samsung's got their um, you know, one where you look at cameras inside, so you look inside, so you don't order that extra jar of mustard. You can change the temperature, but who does that on a fridge, really? It's like you're creating features that you don't need. You can, you can, um, the, the one good thing is like, it'll tell you when the door's open. That's kind of valuable, especially, you know, my, my daughter tends to leave stuff open. And the other good function is, is the fact that, you know, if you've got a, um, a, wa uh, a water filter, it'll tell you to change the water filter. That's kind of nice. Um, door alarm. I mean, you know, the real promise is smart. I, I still think it's cooking. It's like, you know, tell me you want to cook lasagna and the thing will cook it for you. Um, but I, I really don't see uh, smart, except there's one feature that's coming out, LG and G, where, where it'll sense 
the problem, send the service or the part before it becomes an issue, especially in a refrigerator. I think that's incredibly valuable. But all this other stuff, I mean, you know, I've never changed the temperature on my fridge. I forgot it, to be quite honest. So, uh, but I think the service, a- the service aspect is smart, supersedes any kind of functional stuff that, that, that's coming down the pike, in my opinion. I, I don't know what you're seeing, Fran. Yeah, no, completely agree there. You know, the service thing is definitely interesting and I would definitely say valuable. And as far as brands go, you know, certainly some of the brands that we've talked about, like a G, even a G profile, a G cafe, LG, Bosch makes really great uh, counter depth refrigerators with dual compressors in there. So talking about, you know, the separation there with fridge freezer. So you're, you're, you're looking for just a really good refrigerator, some, you know, without the smart technology. Yeah. I mean, there's a few brands like really the LGs, the Samsungs that really kind of take it to the next step with some of that with, you know, the, the Samsung, the family hub and things like that, which honestly we don't really recommend a lot of times there either. Um, but for a good, really just good refrigerator, absolutely. Like a Bosch, a GE, LG brands like that. Absolutely. To answer, to answer your question, Leah, I think the only ones that don't have smart technology, and again, you don't have to install it either is, um, is um, I think the Whirlpool company, Whirlpool, KitchenAid, Gen Air don't have smart right, right now maybe some store brands that they OEM um, and some other manufacturers out there that, 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 that we don't carry might not have either. I'm not sure about Frigidaire and Electrolux. Maybe they don't either. So again, on, uh, again, on, oh, sorry, friend. Oh, I was just going to say, just like you said, you know, some of these smarter technologies, it's not like they're intrusive or you really need to use them. They're kind of something that's there that, you know, quite honestly, I'd say most people probably aren't using in most of the refrigerators too. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, so on refrigeration, uh, someone's looking to replace a 42 inch Electrolux built in, um, that, that can be a unique size. I think we talked about some options in the presentation, but what, what might be some good options for that 42 inch size? When do you want it? <laughs> um, well, it, you know, first of all, um, it's not that easy, um, to just, you'd think it would be the one piece guy, the, the, the one piece <laughs> 42s sub zero's got them in side by side in french door uh true has them in side by side i think only right now um depending on how your cabinets were cut you could put two columns in perhaps uh 24 and 18 which would open you up and again you got to check the plumbing and the electrical because sub zero is different from electrical so you almost have to have someone out there to do a site check to see what you can do and then if you can do two columns and you've got like every manufacturer in the world now manufactures columns. Now, I think Monogram's got 42 and I believe Cafe's got 42 as well. And Studio as well has a 42 side by side as well. And just like you said, you know, depending on your cutouts, your electrical, they're you know, certainly very different than a freestanding refrigerator where it's pulling it out, putting it back in, you know, most likely wouldn't, could, wouldn't, could need some modifications there. Mm-hmm. We, um, we touched on laundry earlier. We talked about top loads. Um, what's, the, what's, a good, what's a good consideration for front load electric uh, laundry? Um, are there difference between regular and compact sizes for people to consider? Yes. First of all, um, I, think, I think front load laundry is all pretty good. Um, it really depends on what feature set you want. Um, LG is good, they've got that Turbo 360 that'll turn any cycle into 30 minutes to these uh, sprays. LG is incredibly reliable too, especially on their front load. You know, you've got, it, it depends how far you want to take it. You got steam, you've got, uh, you know, special cycles. And as you move up, uh, they have an auto dispenser on their higher models. I, I happen to like auto dispensers because everyone always puts too much. It's almost impossible not to put too much in. I, I, I read blogs and I find myself putting in too much detergent. What happens is when you put in too much detergent, it, it stays in the machine and eventually, you know, causes a problem, seizes it up, whatever. Uh, but what, what um, you know, if you want a really good dispenser, G's got that uh, dispenser. They got a 40 load dispenser and, and the best and second best model. They also have, uh, you know, front loads get a bad rap for um, mold, which can happen in the gasket. I always dry it off with a towel. Um, but G's got the um, antimicrobial microband in their gasket. They've got the antimicrobial in their dispenser too. Um, so you don't get a mold problem with, with G. 
Um, this is one thing where smart is good on, on, on all these because you don't have to go down and watch the thing for the last four minutes and go back upstairs. So I, I happen to be more partial to, uh, to, uh, to the LG and G lines for features and reliability. I think Whirlpool makes some good ones. We haven't been able to really sell them much for whatever reason. Um, and I'm sure Frigidaire and Electrolux are just fine. They're just not as uh, uh, feature packed, but I look at an auto dispenser, figure out what cycles you want and, and, and pretty much buy it like that. And you could do compact for him. Yeah, and compact, you know, a lot of differences there with compact. So obviously the size, we're at 24 by 24 typically. In Boston, you know, we see that a ton in the city, but also with compact and really kind of sneaking into full size now too is, you know, you have options on the dryer as far as vented or ventless. And really what you see now and for sure and you know, high rises and multi-units and things like that is, is the ventless laundry and heat pump laundry, which is more efficient. Um, and really doesn't, you don't have to cut any holes in the walls for, for all those things that you're really starting to see that more so versus even vented. You're starting to see that come up even in full size laundry now. And I do think over the next five years or so, LG is coming out with uh, their, their wash tower, their single piece wash tower that will be coming out in a ventless laundry as well. And I think even for single homes and things like that, when it comes to um, the lead uh, certifications and just being more efficient and not cutting holes there. And that's really a, something that's really been huge over the last few years. I think you're going to start seeing that more, even in the full size, but Bentless uh, for, for compact laundry, definitely brands like Beko, Mila are brands that we do a lot with. And um, Mila really only provides Bentless. And that's really what that is. is kind of European laundry is compact. And in Europe, there really is no vented laundry. It's all Bentless. And you're starting to see that definitely come through more in the United States as well. Yeah, it's 24 by 24, so it can be in a, in a kitchen or a, uh, or a small closet. Mm -hmm. We have a few more questions to get through here. Um, keep sending them into the Q&A. Um, Steve, you touched on service as part of the consideration uh, when, when making your product purchase. Um, you know, we've written before that parts availability should be part of the equation as well. Any... Um, uh, Anything you want to talk about in terms of um, considering different brands because of parts availability? Oh boy. Um, <laughs> um, I think it's, I think it's hit or miss. Like when you talk about, you know, what do companies do? Do they make parts? Do they put them in products where they actually can, you know, make money and satisfy their shareholders? Um, and, and I don't fault them for that, but I, I think I think parts are an issue, are an ongoing issue, and and not just that, but parts to newer things. We're going to be pioneering some of these problems where it's a new part. You know, what's the problem? It's a new problem with a new part. So, um, I think traditionally the domestic companies have done pretty well. LG LG is not bad. Um, the first thing to do is, you know, what I would do is I, uh, not to backtrack here, I'd, I'd go to our reliability posts. We, we, we basically put the percentages of what everything needs to, to, to be fixed and buy something that doesn't need to be fixed that way as much as something that does. But I think, again, you know, you're, you're, you're looking at a, probably another two year problem uh, for parts as well. And then um, let's question <laughs> about uh, wall ovens. Um, electric wall ovens with steam cooking. Uh, what, what brands might we consider? Uh, what goes into making um, those, those decisions? Well, it kind of depends on what you want to do with steam. There's steam ovens, and then there's steam assist ovens, right? What a steam oven will do, it'll allow you to cook a, cook a, cook a, um, um, a meal in steam. And steam's better because it adds moisture. It doesn't take it out. Like, you know, you get a juicy piece of chicken because you're not baking all the, you're not baking the nutrients out. And you can make anything in a steam oven. They bake great brownies, um, all sorts of stuff here that, that we've done in a steam oven. It's, it's better. So if you're looking at steam ovens, the best is Gaggenau, but you really need to know what you're doing because you can control the percentage of steam. Like, you know, pastry needs to be a certain percentage of steam. Um, so if you're good, and, and you already know, and you've got steam, um, you're a steam expert, Gaggenau's the best, the most complete steam oven. If you are a, if you are a person that, that wants to learn steam quickly, Mila and their master chef line 
does a does a great job of making it easy here. It's just you just press buttons. You know, what's the weight? What's the food type? Hit the button and plumb it out if you can. Then there's Steam Assist. What Steam Assist will do for you is it'll harden, caramelize. Um, you know, in ovens, typically uh, the lines are, the lines that 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 really do well in Steam is Wolf, is uh, 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 Mila, obviously, Gagano would be the best if you know what you're doing. Um, and then and then we're testing the SKS stuff, which is supposed to be very promising based on um, the first things. And those are the ones. And, and everybody, you know, everybody has a steam of them, but they, they, they buy it from somebody else. So um, I'd be careful that way. Great. Thank you, Steve. Um, one, we had, a, we talked about the Samsung bespoke in the presentation earlier. Um, Question came in, why didn't Samsung make ranges and colors like Blue Star or Birdas only? Well, like Blue Star, for example, that you can get, there's hundreds of colors available and even custom options, right? So, um, Steve, you want to take that one? Well, it's a simple one, really. Um, Blue Star doesn't make any colors, they make to order. Exactly. You know, they're a small manufacturer, right? La Cornu, 50 colors, made to order. Bertazzoni's got six colors, right? or seven colors or eight, whatever it is, but manageable. When you're talking about Samsung, a huge multinational conglomerate, they're not gonna make a color, you know, you know these, these guys like, you know, GE, uh, LG, Samsung, the major industrial companies don't think one, one at a time, right? Blue Star does, they'll make a $12,000 range. And if you want a special kind of royal blue or son of a chip, they'll make it because they have the products and you know the expense behind that to do it, but nobody really, you know, all those companies that have 50, 100, 200 calls, they're not stocking it. And Samsung, <coughs> the easiest way for them to get back with the bespoke is to do it in white and black, real black, real white with some accessories, not pink, clementine, and everything else. You know, it's like you're starting with less than 1% of the total purchases. That's what I think. I just think you think of, a major industrial company is not thinking onesie twosie. Yeah, for sure. And like we talked about the GE cafes, you know, they've really kind of stuck to more of the common ones, like the white with the with the brush bronze handles. And what cafes done too is, you know, they have the matte white, the matte black. They give you the option to change some of those handle styles with brush stainless, bronze, copper, things like that to kind of change it up a little bit. But they've really kind of also kind of tried to keep that small. Really, the brands that, just like you said, Steve, that are doing color, those are truly made to order with a true, a blue star, someone like that. Yeah, you, you look at you look at big companies, they want efficiency and volume. It's the small niche players that don't really care. I mean, uh, they're like, sure, I mean, we're not going to be efficient, but we're going to sell it for twelve thousand dollars, right? And 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 really with the exception of sub zero, it may be true. Uh, none of the big companies have been successful with any of these type of like, you know, derivative initiatives that are different than making a thousand boxes, you know. So just a couple more questions here. Uh, we have time for some more if uh, anything <laughs> pops into the Q&A. Um, supply chain question. Uh, we hear this all the time now. When, when do we think supply will return to normal? That's such a tough question. I mean, it's, it, it's funny because we, you know, in our appliance advisors too, it's, you know, we always joke about this. At least once a week, there's always a question about supply chain. And it is so hard to predict, you know, it's it obviously we would, we would have all hoped it would be by now, but it definitely doesn't seem to be like that. Certainly some smaller things are easing, but I mean, I think we're still a ways away from really kind of getting fully back to where it was pre COVID for sure. I, I would have said uh, earlier this year, I would have said 2024. Um, but now I, I think it might even be later. Um, you know, you take a look, we just made a major dishwasher purchase with something, you know, you, you would do and you get it like two weeks from now. It's not coming. It's not coming for a year. And that's a dishwasher, right? Yeah. Dishwasher is like a common item. You look at a factory, they're pumping out thousands of these things. And again, you know, nothing is, you know, I, I love Bosch, uh, but the, the demand is so outstripped supply that, you know, they're, 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 they're a year out on a dishwasher. So. And then um, maybe the final question here, uh, and I held this one back because I think it goes to the theme of today's overall topic here. Um, so someone writes, planning a kitchen or kitchen 
uh, refresh starting January of 2023. So about six months out, five months out right now. Should I order my appliances now? And I think that goes to kind of, Steve, what you're talking about. Um, take it away. Go ahead, Fran. You start. Uh, absolutely, yes. <laughs> no question. Six months, yeah, six months is definitely, especially depending on the type of appliances that you're looking at. I'd say, honestly, most appliances, six months minimum for sure. There's certainly some different brands that we can get faster and things like that. But if you're looking at, you know, mid to high end appliances, six months really is the minimum. And we always say, you know, depending on the number of appliances that you're looking for and a full kitchen package, you can almost expect something to be delayed because it's just the way things are now. And, you know, the ETAs are changing constantly. We're getting updates constantly. But no question, if you're needing appliance within six months, you know, you definitely should be doing that as soon as possible. We've talked about some brands that are over a year, not to say that their entire line is over a year, but to complete that kitchen package. I mean, you could absolutely be looking at a year or more for certain appliances. All right, let me, uh, first of all, whoever wrote this question, um, you know, we've been doing a lot of these webinars uh, because um, I, I, I did a, I, I've done two renovations. I, uh, I renovated my apartment in 2014 and I renovated a, a, a brownstone in, uh, that was burned down in 2017. And I thought that was hard. And my hat's off. Uh, we spent a lot of time in these webinars and appliance advisors because what I did in 2017 what I thought were bad decisions. Let me give you what's going to happen in this, right? So we're telling you that it's going to take a year, right? So behind door number one is perhaps it'll take you a year. Behind door number two, if it doesn't, your appliance dealer that hasn't invested in warehousing because this whole industry is just in time is going to say to you, hey, I got your appliances in five months. You need to take them, right? So what do you do then? I mean, you know, where do you go then? And really what it comes down to is this, is, is really you need to over communicate where you are in your project and what your expectations are. And you need to almost come up with like a spreadsheet of what each dealer will do for you. Um, you know, who's got warehousing. Warehousing is, we're moving to a, we're moving into a building next year that's 240,000 square feet. We operate out of 100,000 now. We've rented 50,000 more. And there's trailers in our properties with other stuff in it, right? So we're really operating under 160,000. So if your dealer doesn't have, where it hasn't invested in warehousing, you're going to get your stuff sooner than you want. So you really have to over communicate what it is you want. And again, you know, the best thing you can do is, is be as flexible as possible or stuff in stock as possible and over communicate. Now, here's the problem, right? If you live in Massachusetts, guess what happens in August, right? Your tax weekend. So you get a blizzard of orders. So you take your lead times, right? And you, you multiply that out by, and, and, and it's not just Massachusetts. I think like 20 states have tax-free weekends. So everyone's going to save it, right? So you could probably get that, you know, for those people that are planning your tax day strategy, it's like, it's like we're doing a webinar on this because, you know, here's the other problem is, you, you order, if you ordered it Friday before tax weekend, you could probably get it within two weeks. You order it over tax weekend, you could be waiting months for that same item. And, and it's just, I, you know, I, I feel bad for homeowners and, and contractors of today. You really have to button down everything you do, over communicate to your contractors, your, 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 for, everybody needs to be on the same page. It's like, it's almost like building a submarine. You know, it's just like, everything is just gonna come in and you gotta give yourself enough lead time, enough flexibility to get your job done without really going crazy. So that's some of the problems um, that you're gonna, you're gonna contend with. But if you're six months out now, if you're saying you're six months before you started, you got time, really. Um, but if, if your project is gonna go, say a year, you gotta start thinking about it. <coughs> And then you got to start thinking about your dealer. It's almost like, you know, do you have a warehouse? Let me see it. And it's not a buying group warehouse because a lot of them will show you their buying group warehouse, but you can't store things there. They only pull stuff from there. So, you know, there's, there's just so much more you have to do than I had to do in 2017. And my, my, my heart's off to you, you know, and, uh, you know, these guys do uh, appliance advisor every Thursday. You know, we answer stuff on the blog, you know, uh, you know, semi-daily, you know, if we're on vacation, might wait a week, but 
these are some questions that you can ask us. Even if you're not from the area, we're happy to uh, answer questions because we know how hard it is. I mean, we're redoing showrooms now and it's taking forever. So, mm -hmm. you know, it's, it's just, it's just really hard. I think that's a good spot to wrap it up uh, on that note. Um, and like Steve said, we do have appliance advisors at, um, every Thursday. So later today, we're going to do a deep dive on um, how to choose a dishwasher um, and everything that goes into making those, that decision for you. Um, you can catch that on all of our social channels, YouTube, Facebook, LinkedIn. It's going to be live streamed. Um, a reminder that we will be sharing this um, via email right after. So you'll have the recording. And this will also live on our YouTube channel uh, alongside all of our other webinars, which you can which you can um, you can take take in if you're in the mark if you are considering a project. And with that, uh, let's call it a day. Thank you, Steve. Thank you, friend.